And um, thank you all so much for taking the time to be here today. Uh, like, like some of my colleagues, I was raised in military housing as well. My dad had a 30-year career in the Marine Corps, and so we sp I spent my entire childhood growing up on military bases. And um, it's interesting that back when I was a kid, before you could move out, they'd come in with a white glove and go in every corner and look in every vent. And I mean, it, it, was, a, it was as disciplined as my father's career was. And so, um, so it, it's, it is a little disheartening to uh, have learned about this over the past months. And, uh, and it's happening, in fact, in my home state of New Mexico, where the climate is extremely dry. So, um, so I, I, I am I'm disheartened, to say the least. Um, but in addition to, to everything that's been mentioned here today, I've heard reports that retaliation still persists against military families who are raising concerns about the conditions of their housing. This is extremely troubling as retaliation is a big part of the breach of trust between the Department of Defense and families that lead these families to come to the press and to Congress in the first place. And it must stop. Uh, I realize that for some um, military wives, uh, one way they can uh, communicate with other families is through social media. And, and so I realize that, that that is one way they've been trying to figure out who all is suffering from the same issues that they are. Um, so I, I wanted to ask each of you if you commit now to adopting and enforcing a zero to tolerance policy on retaliation against any families, any military families, who are raising concerns about the housing, including within the chain of command on the bases where our service members live and serve in the housing offices that should be advocating for our military families and among the private contractors who we are paying to serve our family. So if each of you could um, let me know if, if that is, if the zero tolerance policy on retaliation is happening now and if it's being enforced. Congressman, I'll tell you that I have, we have zero tolerance for it to the point of proactively giving out our email addresses. So if we hear of it, folks can re reach out to us to take care. But absolutely a zero tolerance. And for the Department of the Navy representative, absolutely that is the case. We've made it very clear to our partners it's unaccept unacceptable, and it's also one of the key planks of the, uh, of the Tenant Bill of Rights that we're developing. Thank you. And that has always been the policy of the Air Force, and this was an opportunity for us to reinforce that. Um, Ma'am, the same with the Army, and one step forward, the Army has uh, an Inspector General um, um, assessment going on. Uh, that will be completed in about a month and a half. And that's one of the aspects that they are looking into to see if there is any such activity reported and, and further investigate. And so we will have confirmation of exactly the lay of the land. And if there is such activity, it will be dealt with um, appropriately within the uh, particular channels involved. Thank you. And I'll ask that any of those contact um, emails or, or contact numbers be submitted to the record so that in the chance that anyone from my district calls me and tells me they're being retaliated against, I can actually have some information where they can contact someone to remedy that situation. So thank you for that. Um, who is actually, you might have already kind of answered this, but who is responsible for investigating claims of retaliation against families, whether internal or external to the Department of Defense? Do we know that? Within the department and with each of the service, ma'am, the inspector general has a responsibility of the, taking that on. Uh, prior to that point, our leadership uh, ought to be looking at those issues, and should it get to the level, it would be the DOD IG, but each of the service inspector generals will look at that. Excellent. Does anyone else have anything to add to that? No? Okay. Um, and what are, what, are there any consequences, and what are they uh, for anyone who retaliates against any military families trying to report these housing issues, and, and to your knowledge, have those been enforced? Congressman, uh, in terms of specific actions, 
uh, I will tell you that because there is zero tolerance, if it's a military member, a specific action is taken against that individual on a range of different actions. If it is a civilian member of the Department of Defense, uh, action is taken against them up to and including uh, removal from service of the nation. Uh, so it is taken very seriously. Thank you. And uh, last on this issue, when and how uh, will you communicate this policy, including resources for families and the consequences for those who engage in retaliation to re relevant parties? Congresswoman, across the board, each of our services have communicated that to their members and the families. Part of the town halls that you've heard alluded to is underscoring the fact that uh, there is zero tolerance for retaliation. I have personally shared that with all of the CEOs of the respective privatization uh, partners that we have. So there is clear understanding of what our expectations are, and that is that we support our family members and our